Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to read or understand a dressmaking pattern. I'm going to be talking you through the details that you'll find on the front cover, the back cover, the pattern and the instruction booklet inside. We're going to look at how to choose the right size pattern, looking at the finished garment measurements, how to work out how much fabric you need, whether you need to do a layout or not, and all of the little details that you'll find on a pattern so that they make sense. This is the perfect class if you are new to sewing or dressmaking. So grab a pattern if you've got one, otherwise simply watch along with the pattern that I share with you. Let's start by looking at the front of the pattern envelope. Here you're going to have a photo, a drawing, or perhaps a combination of a drawing and a photo of what the pattern is going to look like when you've made it up. Of course, this is where you start. You're going to need to decide if you want to make this pattern. And patterns will usually come in a variety of styles or versions. On this pattern, there are three different versions, A, B, and C. The difference is that A and B are shorter, C is longer, and there are different sleeves. On the pattern on the right here, A and B simply have a different length. So consider the design or picture of the pattern and which version you want to make. It's also a good idea to have a look at the wrong side or the back of the pattern envelope so that you can see the line drawings. These will help you to get a clearer view of what the pattern is going to look like. These line drawings combined with the drawings or photo on the front of the pattern envelope will give you an idea as to what the garment is going to look like. Another thing that you can do is to have a look on the internet and to do that, you might want to use the pattern number to search for it. So most of these big pattern companies have given the patterns different numbers and you would use that to search for this particular pattern. Once you've decided that you want to make this pattern, you're then going to need to make sure that the pattern that you've picked up covers your size. You'll see here that this pattern goes from an eight to a 16, this pattern goes from a six to a 14, and this pattern here only has three sizes, an eight, 10, and 12. Now, of course, you're going to want to know what size you are. And the first thing I must point out is that you will not be the same size that you are when you buy clothes in the shops. If you turn your pattern envelope over, you should find the sizes. And these are often on this little flap of the pattern envelope that would have been inside it when you bought it. So you're going to want to need to take your measurements. You want to take accurate measurements of the bust, waist, and hip as a starting point. These need to be not too tight, but also not too loose. You don't want to be positioning a finger underneath the tape measure. If you are new to taking these measurements and are not sure where you need to accurately take them, I have two how to measure videos. The first one linked here shows you how to measure the bust, waist and hip. The second video covers measuring in more detail and I show measuring of a number of different areas, which might help you if you get into doing some alterations to the pattern. I'll pop a link to that here. So take your measurements and compare them to the pattern envelope. Choose the size that closely resembles yours and you do not need to be the same size at the bust, the waist and the hip. You could circle three different sizes and grade between them. Before you stop there, you're also going to want to consider something that's called ease. And I have a little tutorial that might help you with this. I'll pop a link to it here. Ease is the difference between your measurements and what you choose on the pattern here and the finished garment size when the garment is made. Now you're going to want to have a look at the finished garment measurements. These can be found on the back of the pattern envelope. I've got finished garment measurements here, but often this won't include everything. For example, on this pattern, I simply have the back length from base of neck, version A, version B. So it's just the difference between the lengths of A and B. On this pattern here, I also have the back length from base of neck, the difference between A and B, which is shorter, and C, which is longer. And I also have the width of the lower edge. So the circumference of that lower edge, what does that measure? 
of course that changes for all of the different sizes. So that's one place to start looking, the back of the pattern envelope. The other place is to get the pattern out and to have a little look inside. When you open up the pattern pieces, you should see either some little circles with a cross through them, or perhaps just a horizontal line marking the bust, the waist, and the hip. And at those points, you will have some measurement figures, and these are the finished garment measurements. Ideally, you have these for the bust, the waist, and the hip. However, not all patterns include them. If your pattern doesn't include this, then of course you could measure the pattern pieces. You would need to remove the seam allowances and measure them in the approximate position of the bust, waist, or low hip, and compare that to your measurements. So let's take an example here. Let's say we wanted to make a size 14. The size 14 would be a 36 inch bust, whereas the finished garment is going to measure 38 inches. So there are two inches of ease. That's going to be approximately five centimeters. Now you're going to need to consider whether you like this amount of ease. And that is a hugely personal question. When you are new to making patterns, the best advice that I have is to go and measure something in your wardrobe that is woven non-stretch. Measure it at the bust, waist, and hip, and use that as a comparison. I'll include a link to the blog post where I discuss my minimum preference of ease. So you may want to consider the finished garment measurements prior to actually buying the pattern, especially if you're perhaps on the edge of the sizes. So say you're a size 16, you would want to make sure that you had the right pattern, either the range of smaller sizes or the range of larger sizes. Let's continue with the back of the pattern envelope. Now that we know you've got the right range of sizing. So we can start at the top where we've got a description of the garment. This is another thing that might be useful when you're deciding whether you want to make this particular pattern. For example, this garment says it's a lined dress, close fitting through the bust, has lower princess seams, side front pockets, a back zipper, and a narrow hem. Generally speaking, the list on the left of the patterns is in English, and the measurements are going to be in imperial measurements, so inches and yards. The list on the right in this pattern is in French, and the measurements are in centimeters or meters. So after the description, we can move down and the pattern will inform us of the fabrics. It is important to read this section and to choose a fabric that is suitable for your garment. If your fabric is not designed to be stretch, you don't want to be grabbing a fabric with stretch in it. If you were to make a garment in a stretch fabric that wasn't designed to be, you would probably find that it would be too big. If you're working with stretch fabrics, there is usually a scale on the side of the pattern which will allow you to test if you're using the fabric with the right amount of stretch. Once you've got the fabric type sorted, you can then look at how much fabric you're going to need. And usually the pattern will break it up between the different options. So I've got option A and option B. And I've also got my lining here for A and for B. You're going to want to have a look at the width of the fabric. So on the left hand side, I've got 45 inches or 60 inches. On the right hand side, 115 centimeters or 150 centimeters. So that is the width of the fabric. When the fabric is on the roll or the bolt, how wide is it? So once you know that, you can then travel across the list and work down from your size at the same time until you get to a point that works for you. So say we're doing the size 14, we're going to do version B, and our fabric is 60 inches. We're going to work across and choose that four and five eighths of a yard, or it would be 4.3 meters. Now you might've noticed that I have two rows for 60 inch. Now what that is telling us is that have we got a fabric with nap? So at the top here, you've got with nap has got one star, without nap has got two stars. So nap is best described as a fabric such as velvet. With velvet, the fabric is smooth in one direction, and if you run your hand in the other direction, it would be rough. If you were to grab your pattern and lay it out on the velvet any old way, what you might find is that 
you end up with one side of your front with the velvet nice and smooth and the other side of your front with the velvet going rough. Velvet isn't the only time that you're going to want to follow a nap layout. Patterns such as this also need to follow a nap layout. Otherwise, the pattern would be upside down on one panel. And many other fabrics can look a different color if they're turned up the other way. Personally, I pretty much cut out all my garments with a nap layout because I have been burned by times when I haven't. It depends on how much fabric you have. If you're short of fabric, you're just going to need to test it. To hold up two pieces of that same fabric with going in opposite directions to then decide if you need it. But that is the difference. If your fabric has nap, a pattern, if it's velvet, you're going to need to cut it out with nap, which means you're going to need more fabric. So moving on, we've got the lining that we also need in the size 14, so I could work out how much I needed of that. And then finally, it's going to give me notions. Now, notions are the other little bits and pieces that I'm going to need in order to make my garment. So here, I need a zipper and a hook and eye. 22 inch zipper, if I move across here, that's 55 centimeters. Sometimes the notions will be divided up by the different styles. For example, here, version C needs some elastic, but the others don't. The other thing to note is interfacing. So in interfacing is listed here, how much you need for all of the versions. So the back and the front of the pattern envelope are going to give you a number of useful things. They're going to show you what the garment is, the size that you're going to need. You may need to get the pattern out to look at the finished garment measurements. They'll tell you the fabric that you should buy, how much fabric, and the other bits and pieces that you need in order to make it. Now you've bought your pattern, let's take a little look at what's inside this envelope. When you take your pattern out of the envelope, you will find it really neatly folded and you're just going to want to work to unfold that. You'll also find the instructions. So let's start by unfolding our pattern and looking at our pattern pieces. Start by smoothing out the pattern. And I usually begin by finding the pattern pieces that I need. I recommend that you iron these patterns so that they don't have any creases in them. You can do it at this stage or once you've roughly cut out the pattern pieces. It's up to you. When you're ironing, just use heat and no steam. So to find the pattern pieces that I'm going to need, I usually grab my instructions and I'll open these out and you just want to check that you've got all of the pages that you need first off. So this is my page one and usually it will tell me how many pages I should have, three pages. That's great, I've got everything that I need. And looking at that, I can tell you that sometimes these patterns have mistakes. I have got two, page three of threes. So we'll put one of those away, but luckily we have page one, page two, and page three. So on page one, First off, we have a, another nice line drawing and the difference between the versions A and B. Then moving down, we have got this little section here, which shows all of the different pattern pieces, the numbers and what you need for each of the dresses. So dress A and dress B, on this pattern, I need them all. As you can see on this pattern, it clearly labels which piece you need for which particular style of the pattern. For example, the cape is only for garment A. Sleeve flounce is for garment B. So what I like to do is I would work down this list, ticking them off once I've found them and roughly cut them out. Of course, you don't have to cut your pattern out. You can trace it off if you would prefer to keep the original. So that's how I usually start. I usually roughly cut them out, tick them off to say that I've got them. You'll also find on this instruction here that there are again body measurements. These are the body measurements that are the same as on the back of the pattern envelope at the top, these ones here. So they're not the finished garment measurements, but they've also given me the back waist length, which is useful to know if I need to adjust the length of the pattern. Some patterns I have found the finished garment measurements on the instructions as well, so it's worth checking there for them. The next useful bit of information in the instructions is the cutting layouts. 
So all of these pictures tell you different ways in how to cut out your pattern on your fabric, depending on your size, the width of your fabric, and whether you have a nap in the fabric or not. This is usually differentiated by the different dresses. So we've got dress A and then dress B. Lining A, and then on the back here, there is lining B. Now, you're going to want to find the width of the fabric that you bought. So we said we were going to do dress B, and we said we were buying 60 inches, and let's say we've got a nap layout, which means that we're looking for the one star, so this part here. But this bit is only suitable for an eight, 10, and a 12, so we're going to have to turn it over and have a look at this one, 60, one star, with nap, 14. This is what we're going to be using to help us lay out our fabric. And the lining piece for B is going to be here. Now the pattern usually gives you a guide as to the pictures. So you've got different pictures for the patterns and for the fabric. So the dark color here is the right side of the fabric facing up. So this is all single layer right side of fabric facing up when you're cutting it out, rather than traditionally you would fold your fabric in half, right sides together. That's fine as long as your pattern pieces aren't too big, which is what I'm guessing these are going to be. The pattern is blank if it's right side of the pattern and dotted if it's the wrong side of the pattern. And you can see that that's the way the pattern pieces have been put on the fabric. And S is our selvage. So the selvage edges are either side, the width of the fabric is this way, this long part is of course the length. So you can use this as a guide when you're laying your pattern out. You do not have to follow it if you don't want to. I just would always suggest that you make sure that you pin all your pattern pieces on or that you can make sure that you can get them on the fabric prior to cutting out because you don't want to start cutting it out and realize that you don't have enough fabric. I will be totally honest with you and some people might tell me off for this, but I never follow these. I do my own layout because my fabric is always different and how I want my garment to be cut out on my fabric is dependent on what I'm doing. So then the instructions are going to go step by step through how you're going to make the garment, giving you a bit of a glossary of terms should you not understand anything. Again, bear in mind that the seam allowances are stated as being included here, 5 eighths of an inch, 1.5 centimeters. That should be placed in the instructions and on the pattern check it if you can't see it. And you've also got a little illustration of how the pieces are, whether it's right side, wrong side, interfacing, lining, as you go through the instructions. Now we can look a little bit more detail in the pattern. So as I said, I would collect up the pattern pieces. So each pattern piece is usually labeled with what it is and it's given a number. And that means you can clearly find it and tick it off. It should also tell you which version it is for. This is for A and for B. Clearly on the pattern, you should have what you're cutting in your fabric and what you're cutting in your lining. This one is cut one on fold for both fabric and lining, whereas the back pattern over here is cut two in lining and fabric. Of course, you're also going to have the name of the patterns and its code and the sizes. And that of course is a useful thing if you end up with lots of pattern pieces floating about somewhere and you haven't stored them. So on your pattern, you will see that there are lots of different lines. These can be dotted and dashed lines. These can be in color in some patterns. And each of these lines is going to work with a size. The smallest one here is a size eight, working out to the 16. The difference between, say, the eight and the 10, the 10 and the 12, the 14 and the 16, is grading. You're, of course, going to need to pick the size that you are. In my case, it's a 14. I might not be a 14 everywhere, I might be a 14 at the bust, a 16 at the waist, and I could blend between those sizes. When you're cutting your pattern out, after you have made any adjustments to it, you should be cutting away the lines. The lines are extra. Other things to take consideration of. You want to find, when you're cutting out your garment, the grain line. The center front on fold is labeled clearly here, so that means that this whole edge is going to be positioned on the fold of the fabric and that effectively that is the grain line. Whereas on this back pattern piece, the grain line is a line up and down with one arrow. 
Now on this front pattern, we have got the bust marked by this circle and the finished garment measurements. The same for the waist, a circle and a straight line. We've also got some other details. So we have got these triangles and what these are called notches. These are things that you need to mark on your pattern and they will connect to something else. So we've got a notch along this side seam here that is going to be sewn to the side seam at the back. So this notch is going to be matching up to the notch on the front. So usually they're there to match to something or to inform you of something in the instructions. You've got one on the shoulder which will match to the one on the back. So as well as the notches, you might find that you have other markings, triangles, little circles, big circles. These are all points that will match to something depending on what the garment is. These circles here will probably be the position where you need to stop sewing for the pockets. This circle here will probably be a sewing point for the lining. If you want to, you could pre-read the instructions and see where it refers to small circles, large circles, triangles. On this pattern, you also have a stitching line for the dart. That is this solid line here with these tiny little circles that will need to match to each other when you're sewing it. So every pattern will be slightly different. There may be other details that you're needing to look at. The key things are to understand where the gray line is, what fabric or lining or interfacing you're cutting and how many, to know what notches are and to know that that's going to match to something and that you need to mark it on your fabric. The same goes for the small circles, the triangles, the large circles. Even this solid line here might want to be marked on the wrong side of your garment so that when you sew the dart, it is accurate. The seam allowance may or may not be written on the pattern, but do check the pattern and the instructions for the seam allowance for your pattern that you're working with. The other thing to note in this pattern is the difference between cut here for A, which is the shorter length, and at the very bottom, cut here for B. And it does have the hem allowance for the lining and the fabric written on there. I wanted to share some other lines that are often seen on patterns, but that particular pattern didn't have them. And that's these double lines here where it says lengthen or shorten. Now these particular lines will be placed in places between the bust and the waist, perhaps between the waist and the low hip, the low hip and the hem. And they're designed for should you require lengthening or shortening this garment based on your individual measurements. Perhaps you've measured your back length from the nape of your neck down to your waist at the back and compared that to the pattern. If you have a difference, ideally you should be adjusting it. And these are the lines where you do it. You would cut one of the lines and open or close. Thanks for watching. I really hope that you now feel a little bit more comfortable working with your dressmaking pattern and that you understand what all of the marks mean. Thanks for watching and see you soon.